Hello and welcome to this tutorial series on making a 2D game using OpenGL. This series will be focusing on aspects that more resemble a game engine rather than a specific game. And in this episode we're going to talk about how to create a window and how to construct a rigid game loop. This will not be a tutorial on C Sharp specifically, so it does require some kind of prior knowledge of C Sharp. However, you do not need any kind of previous knowledge of OpenGL stuff, since I will be explaining everything as I go along. Also, we will be using the newer modern OpenGL programmable pipeline, since the fixed pipeline stuff is almost completely deprecated now. As a starting point, we will be using the project you end up with from my previous tutorial, where I show you how to get OpenGL and GLFW up and running in Visual Studio. So if you want to get up to speed to follow this tutorial, then I'd recommend you go watch my previous tutorial first. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So if you followed my previous tutorial, you'll likely have the following project structure. You have a folder with all the GLFW binding classes. You have a class name GL, which is your OpenGL binding. And then you have your Hello Triangle sample program in your program class. We'll quickly do one thing before we actually start, and that is to move our OpenGL binding into its own folder. So we'll quickly just make a new folder, name it OpenGL, and then drag our GL class into there. And then quickly go into the GL class and fix the namespace of it. So it says OpenGL tutorial series.OpenGL. What you should write here is supposed to be the project name that you have. So if you have named your project to OpenGL Tutorial, then you should write OpenGL Tutorial.OpenGL instead. Now I'll write this here. Save that and then close it down. Now let's remove the Hello Triangle sample program and just make a completely empty program class. Um, and then we'll fill it with some of the basic stuff. So we'll just create our namespace and then class program we'll make the public static void main with a couple of arguments like so there we have a completely empty program you should be able to run this without any trouble like so nothing should happen but it should run okay so now we're ready to start we're going to create a few C Sharp classes today, and we will first of all create a class that will handle creating and closing the window, as well as handling all events that are connected to the window itself. So let's start with that. We create a new folder again, put it as rendering, then make a new folder inside of here, name it display, and then we make a new class called display manager. There we go. Let's start by making the class static, since we'll only be having one display ever in our game. We need two methods, two main methods. We need a method that creates the window, create window, and we also need one that closes the window, like so. Now, in this display manager, we also need to store the actual window pointer that we are going to be using throughout the program. So we have to make a property named window, like so. And then we make another one, which is of type vector2. It should be from the namespace system.numerics. Simply press enter, and it should enter the using for you. Then we'll put the window size, like so. All right, so there are a few steps that we need to take to actually create the window. First of all, we want to know the width and height for the initial window for us. We want to know if it is resizable, fixed so it is in the middle. So first of all, we can just make sure that we, when we create the window, we pass the width and height of it, as well as the title of the window. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do window size is a new vector 2 of width and height, like so. Um, and then what we have to do is we have to say glfw.init. This initializes glfw so that we are able to create a window. And then what we have to do is we have to tell glfw what version of OpenGL that we want to use. 
So this is done using window hints, glfw.window hint. And then we choose the hint context, context version major. We say three, since we want to use OpenGL 3.3. So this three basically is this three. And then what we have to do is we also have to say hint.context version minor is three. This means the three right there. And what we want to do is we want to use the core profile programmable pipeline. So we have to say window hint open GL profile and say profile dot core. After this, we can set some more optional things, perhaps making sure that the window is focused whenever we start it. And for example, making the resizable to false because we want to maintain the same size the entire time. So now that we've done that, we have done this. Now what we're going to want to do is actually create the actual window. So we say window is equal to glfw.create window. And the width and height of it all is just the width, height, and the title of it is this title here. The next parameter is which monitor to put the window on. Now this is mainly used to make your game full screen or not. Now I want this window to be in windowed mode uh, to begin with. So I'm going to say monitor.none. Um, and then the window share is if you want to share um, an OpenGL context with another window, which we don't want right now. So we say window.none right there. All right, so now we've created the window. Now we have to check that the window actually was created. This method right here doesn't really throw an error. Instead, it just returns a null pointer for the window. What we have to do is to check if the window is equal to the window.none pointer and if it is then something has gone wrong if something has gone wrong we don't want to continue creating the window we want to just return out of this method if it isn't equal to this window.none pointer we want to keep creating the window and make sure that it actually starts so first of all we do glfw.make context current and do the window that we just created and then we say import now this method import uh, doesn't come from glfw. It is an OpenGL method, which is why we have to say using static OpenGL tutorial series dot OpenGL dot GL, like so. And this function comes from OpenGL. So we say import glfw dot get proc address, like so. And we still have a few things to do. So we want to make sure that the OpenGL viewport is correct or is equal to the window size. So we say GL viewport 0, 0, width and height, like so. And then we do glfw.swap interval. We're going to set this to 0. This means that vsync is off. Um, you can set it to 1 um, if you want vsync to be on. Now I want it to be off, so I'm going to turn it off. Now we still have a tiny little thing to fix, and that is to make sure that the window actually is created in the middle of the screen. So we start by saying rectangle screen is equal to glfw.primarymonitor.work area. This is equal to the size of your monitor, so from the top up here down to the bottom right, like so. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is we're going to want to calculate the x position and y position of where we want the window to be. So the int x is going to be screen dot width minus the width of the window. And we divide this by 2. We're going to do the same for the y position and do screen dot height minus the height divided by 2. And then we're simply going to do glfw.setWindowPosition to x and y, like that. Perfect. This is basically the everything that we need, but we still have this little function left to actually close the window, but we simply have to call glfw.terminate.
This will free any resources that is used up by GLFW right now. There we go. This is the display manager class. And so now we're going to make another class called game. Um, so let's make a new folder again. Name it game loop with a capital L. Looks good. Class game. This class is going to be abstract um, since we're going to be inheriting it from it to actually instantiate our specific game. So this game will have a single public function, um, which is called run. When the game is run, we will have a specific sequence of method calls. Um, first up is the method initialize. This is called before the window and any other OpenGL stuff is initialized. So you can't access OpenGL in this method. It'll just crash the game. Instead, what it's usually made for is perhaps loading settings and setting the initial window size and whatnot. Um, so the second method, it's actually protected. There we go. Protected abstract void load content. This is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to be loading every bit of content that is used for the game, hooking it up to OpenGL and making sure that everything is good to go when we eventually start running the game. So after these two methods have been run, we are going to be starting the actual game loop, which will be just alternating between the update and render method in a while loop. Anyway, we need to create the run method right here because this actually has to do something, right? It has to call these in the correct order and then make sure that these two keep looping and whatnot. So first of all, when we call run, we want to call initialize and then we want to create the window. So we call display manager dot create window. Now this expects uh, the width, height and the title of it. A reasonable way to make sure that we have these variables is to just make a int right here that is the initial windows width like so we make another one initial window height there we go we also need a protected string initial window title like so right here we input these so we put initial window width initial window height and initial window title like so so now we've created the window and after we've created the window, it is time to call load content. And after load content has been called, we want to start the actual game loop. Now GLFW has a very nifty method for checking whether or not we are trying to close the window. And that is calling GLFW like so, dot window should close. So we want to make sure that we don't forget this little not right here. We also have to input the actual window of it. So we can say display manager dot window. There we go. So don't forget this little not right before this. And this will keep looping while the window is open. And while it is looping, we want to first of all call update and then call render. Simple as that. If we were to ever exit this while loop, which is if the window should close, then we want to call display manager dot close window like that. Perfect. Right in between the update and render method, we want to call something called glfw dot poll events. Now this is to make sure that the operating system still recognizes the program as responding. So you know how in Windows it can come up as uh, a program is not responding or anything. And that's because this method has not been called for a very long time. If we make sure to call this every single frame, we can make sure that the window is being responded to by the operating system. Now, important to note as well is that these properties right here will not have a value when we call the run function. So we have to make sure that those actually get a value. We can in Visual Studio just mark these, click this little quick actions button and then click generate constructor. There we go. If you select something in Visual Studio, you can hold left alt and press the up and down buttons on your keyboard and it will move the selected bit of code. So like this, we'll be able to set the initial window width, the height and the window title for the game right as we create the instance of it, which is pretty nifty. Let's also make sure that this is public so that we can access this from anywhere. We're still not ready to try to run this because we don't really have anything going on. 
let's quickly talk about what vsync is. Now vsync is a method for reducing screen tearing in a game by making sure that the game's FPS matches the refresh rate of your monitor. And this is something that GLFW allows to enable and disable, just like I showed right here, the GLFW swap interval. Um, let's say that we have vsync on, like this. And we're running our game at 60 FPS because I have a 60 Hz monitor. We want our player to move at 2 pixels per frame. This would equal 120 pixels per second since we're moving 60 frames per second. So 2 times 60 equals 120 pixels per second. Um, now we want our friend to play our game as well. And our friend has a 144 hertz monitor because he's a lot cooler than me, obviously. Now we have specified our player to move at 2 pixels per frame. But his game is running at 144 FPS, which means that his player will move 288 pixels per second. His player is going to move more than double the speed that my player is moving. So important to note is that this problem occurs even when VSync is off, like this. Let's say that my machine can run my game at around 250 FPS, which is higher than my monitor can actually refresh, but my computer is able to loop the update and render methods that quickly. And yours can run it at 400 FPS because your computer is better than mine. Then we'll still have the same problem where your game is running faster than mine and your player will move faster than it is doing for me. This is obviously a, a very big problem and something that we have to consider, but it is a relatively easy problem to fix. So instead of using units per frame, so instead of moving two pixels per frame, uh, we want to be able to use something per second, right? So if we're able to say that our player should move 100 pixels per second, then no matter which computer we're playing on, the player will move at 100 pixels per second. This is usually done by always being able to access the time that has elapsed during the previous frame and then multiplying every value that you want to needs to be the same sort of on every computer independent of FPS. Uh, we multiply this value with the previous elapsed time of the previous frame. So that will turn our unit from pixel per frame to pixel, pixel per second, which is what we want. So let's create a class that makes sure that this actually works. So in our game loop folder, let's create a new class and name it game time. This is for you that have seen this class in Unity, you'll be very familiar with what we're doing right now. Um, we simply need to make this static first of all because we want to we only want to have one game time ever um, and let's make a public static float delta time and a public static float total elapsed seconds there we go um, and now in our game right here in the run method we want to write before the update function we do game time dot delta time is equal to the current time right now so glfw dot time minus game time dot total elapsed seconds so what this basically means also we have to cast this to a float because this is actually a double then we have to do game dot total elapsed seconds is equal to float glfw dot time there we go what's going to happen is that the delta time will be equal to the current time of the game minus the time of the previous frame which will be equal to the time it took for the previous frame um, or rather the time it took from the previous frame to get to now sort of and the total elapsed seconds will always just be equal to the current time of the program. This will be equal to how many seconds that has passed since we launched the program. Um, so now that we've done this, we're going to be able to make sure that movements in our game will be FPS independent, or rather just time dependent. So we're getting closer to being able to start our program for the very first time. Um, since we made our class game abstract, we're not going to be able to actually make an instance of it. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to make a test game class just to make sure that this works. So you make 
can make a new class just anywhere you'd like. Name it test game, and this will inherit from the game class. And then we're gonna want to implement abstract class like so. Now these these will sometimes end up in the wrong order. Mine ended up in the pretty much correct order, except from the update being before the render. There we go. Beautiful. Now you can remove the not implemented exceptions like this. There we go. And then it'll still say that there's an error. That's because of the constructor. So we have to generate a constructor. And then what we can do in our program class, we can do game. There we go. Is equal to a new test game. And here we have to input the initial window width. I'm just going to say 800, 600 test game. There we go. And then we'll call game.run. If we try to launch this, that should work. Beautiful. And there is our window. It says test game. It's 800 by 600 pixels. It's in the middle of the screen. Um, it's a bright white color right now. Yours might be different from this, uh, depending on your system defaults or your graphics card. But it should be a constant solid color and shouldn't really change. Right now, um, we can actually make sure that this game loop thing actually does work by saying GL, GL clear. Actually, we have to use the OpenGL series.OpenGL.GL. And not forget the static right there, using static. And then we can do GL clear color and what you can do right here is say math f dot sign of game time dot total elapsed seconds zero zero one and then do gl clear the gl color buffer bit just trust me on this i will explain in the next episode what this actually means this is to make sure that this actually works forgot one thing we have to call glfw dot swap buffers as well display manager dot window try to start it and you should see that there we go we have a pulsating window that pulsates in a red color you could change it so that pulsates in any color really but we have made sure that the game loop actually works um, it's in the correct dimensions the vsync seems to be off as i defined it to be since it's running at 4000 fps right now um, so now we have a window, a game loop, and we made the game loop work on any computer independently of the F FPS it is running at. Wonderful. That was quite a bit of work only to open a window, right? Anyway, um, next time we will talk about how to actually start rendering something for real. We will talk about VAOs, VBOs, shaders, and vertices, and all of that good stuff. And with that, we'll create a little square that has a color gradient across it. But for now, thank you for watching.